Welcome back. Our special focus now, municipalities are broken. There's no denying that. But the true extent of service delivery shortfalls are being brought to light now. A new report by the Bureau for Economic Research shows some shocking trends. This includes the lack of basic skills, lack of spending, and irregular and fraudulent expenditure. Professor Johan Kirsten, the Bureau's director, joins me now live from Cape Town. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Before we get into the final details of this report, what would you say is your assessment of the state of municipalities in South Africa? Uh, thank you for having me, Sean. Um, I think it's probably uh, top of mind for everybody. Um, all of us are aware of the problems that we encounter in many of the municipalities. So it's difficult to make a general picture because in some municipalities we have proper functioning, proper delivery of services, but in others it's a complete lack and, uh, and we have general reports of that. But we should remind ourselves what are the tasks of uh, municipalities? What are the basic services? So we have obviously provide water of assured quality to provide electricity for domestic use and commercial use. And I think it's sometimes the commercial use that is a problem for most uh, people as they uh, want to set up businesses, to provide a stormwater system that prevent mitigation and damage of infrastructure in excessive rainfall, in a very important, if you think about KZN, to reticulate sewerage, to deal with solid waste and to build roads and to maintain roads. So if you just have that picture in mind, obviously you then understand why citizens of South Africa complain. Um, so it's probably not necessary for me to present an assessment because mm -hmm. every one of us have a vivid picture of the problems that they're encountering, whether it's the billing system, whether it's the electricity breakdown, whether it's a pipe not being fixed, whether it's a road with a pothole, whether it's uh, um, uh, water quality that is deteriorating or sewage that is uh, um, common in the neighborhood. So I think those are the sort of general picture that we have, but I think we need to understand the causes of that. I think that's uh, the most important, which our report goes into detail. And one of the causes, you say, is a lack of skills in municipalities, because if we have people who are competent in these jobs, they would make sure that proper maintenance work, etc., is actually done. Yeah, very important point, and I think that's the key issue, because the critical staff in a municipality is usually those with engineering services and engineering skills, because your... your um, Resident engineer or your city engineer, as we used to call them, are very important for main, uh, ensuring that plans are approved, that plans are designed for roads, for road maintenance, for electricity supply, etc. The picture you've just shown about the electricity system, the potholes that you see now, are all critical for um, the, the, the process of maintain, maintenance, and it requires engineering input. So the vacancies in the engineering dimension is usually the critical issue for us. And the, on top of that, decisions are often made by the council or politicians with no um, skills in these basic uh, requirements at the engineering level. So you get uh, decisions made on a political basis or French uh, contracts are getting approved. And, it, uh, and, and the real issue of engineering approval, uh, either by an electrical engineer or by a civil engineer, which deals with water supply, with sewage, with roads, etc., are, are quite critical. And you can see that it's often our poorest communities that suffer the most as a result of these things that are not properly planned, properly maintained. You also say that low levels of capital spending could perhaps be seen as one of the greatest causes of municipal yes. failure in South Africa. Just elaborate on that, because we know that the Auditor General has called out municipalities for, one, not doing their books properly, or irregular expenditure or not spending money they have. So what are you finding in that yeah. regard? Yeah, so I think the, that's the second major reason, and that's the underspending of capital budgets. You know, for example, many municipalities do get a municipal infrastructure grant, but we have statistics that show that 63 out of 168 municipalities have underspent by more than 10% that grant that was given to them. And sometimes the underspending is as a result of delays in implementation of the plans as a result of the supply chain management process. And we have make the point in the report that often people are so scared to implement a particular program, given that it might lead to irregular and wasteful expenditure, or they might get fired as a result of it. They did not appoint the correct service provider. So at the end, they do nothing. 
which is the safest option then instead of delivering the service to, to communities. So the combination of supply chain management process, audit requirements, and also skills in the decision-making process contribute to the underspend of, of, um, infra of uh, infrastructure expenditure. But I think linked to that is the budget for repairs and maintenance, uh, because if you don't maintain your assets, if you don't maintain your pipes, you don't maintain your electricity system, then you run into problems later down the, uh, down the years. And the guideline from Treasury is that we should spend at least 8% of the value of property and equipment on maintenance. At the moment, most municipalities are hardly spending 3%. And those in the local municipalities, those in the more rural areas, they tend to spend about a 1% of their property uh, value on maintenance, which then suggests to you that it's likely that the infrastructure will break up over time if you don't maintain it regularly. Yeah, I find it very interesting that we talk about the same issue for years because I've been uh, discussing this, but <laughs> I've been a journalist for 18 years now, and there's been very little exactly. improvement in that regard. Why is that the case and what needs to change for us to see drastic improvement in the way municipalities are run? I think at the end it boils down to leadership and systems. You know, if you think of those that are in power and entrusted with our basic services and our livelihoods, they bigger about political, political positions and positions in government and in the local government and not focusing on improving livelihoods for all. And I think this is the, the critical issue that we are, the local government has become a contested space, but we also have seen to, uh, a lot of migration to the main metropoles, which also leads to uh, overburden on the services of the municipalities, given that you often don't have proper decision making at the municipal level and the delays in decision making. So it's a combination of leadership, decision making, spending approval of budgets, but just taking action and delivering the basics is, is very important. Okay, thank you so much for your insight. Appreciate it. Professor Johan Kirsten, Director of the Bureau for Economic Research.